Good morning. Hello, and welcome to 3D Vision Technologies 10 for Tech Talk, a monthly introduction to engineering technology that can make your company better, faster, and smarter. I'm Todd Majeski, your host for today. Today's topic is improving SolidWorks performance. Our guest speaker is Justin Maxwell, application support engineer level two, and a certified SolidWorks expert for 3D Vision Technologies. Justin works out of our Cleveland office and has been with 3D Vision for over five years. In addition to being a SolidWorks certified expert, Justin has a mechanical engineering degree from the University of Akron. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, Todd. So, Justin, before we get started, I'd like to tell our listeners a little bit about what you do here at 3D Vision Technology. So, can you tell the audience what a typical day looks like? Yeah, sure. So, uh, a lot of you customers listening in probably know me already. I work in our technical support department here at 3D Vision Technologies. So I answer phone calls and emails every day uh, with any questions that people have, either installation, the use of the software, or performance related. Great. So I expect many of our listeners to probably already have some kind of a working relationship with you today. I'm sure a lot of people recognize my voice, that's sure. That's well, great. So, so before I turn the presentation over to you, I want to remind everyone that we'll be asking a few polling questions and to get a reading on some of the issues you're currently having regarding performance. So give us your feedback when these come up. Also, if you have questions, type them in the chat window, and during the Q&A session at the end, we'll address your specific questions. So now let's get started with the 10-4 Tech Talk. All right, thanks, Todd. Hope everyone's Thursday is going good so far. So this 10-4 Tech Talk is going to be about improving solid performance. This is extremely important to me because I work in technical support and people call in all the time uh, and ask what they can do to get SolidWorks running as fast as possible. Sometimes it's because their computer might need some upgrades, sometimes it's because maybe they're just having you know, large files or complicated geometry or something like that, but there's always something we can do to at least help out a little bit. So like Todd said, we totally stress, ask any questions you have during this 10-4 Tech Talk and we can we can take a, a look at whatever you're seeing or whatever problems you're having or feel free to give us a call on technical support. So for this uh, performance topic, we're splitting it into three main categories and this is kind of with any software program. There's going to be three main things that have to do with it performance wise. Number one is your hardware. You have to have a machine that's capable to run SolidWorks to the full extent. If you don't, then there might be some upgrades you have to do. Number two is SolidWorks settings. These are the things you can do inside SolidWorks to tweak it, maybe because you can't upgrade your hardware for whatever reason. And number three are some tips and tricks. So this is the usage of the software. What can you do to pr improve your performance based on your usage or what things you can do? All right, so first of all, we're going to talk about hardware, though. Hardware upgrades are, are, are nice to talk about, but what does SolidWorks actually care about? What upgrades are going to help you out on a day basis? The number one thing that SolidWorks needs is a good graphics card. You need a card that's certified by SolidWorks and is running a certified driver for SolidWorks as well. This certification isn't just saying that, hey, this is a good card and it's expensive. It's actually tested by SolidWorks to make sure that it works for SOLIDWORKS and all the other add-ins that SOLIDWORKS uses. Now, I talk about the NVIDIA Quadro series and the AMD Fire Pro series here. Those are the two main brands of cards that are certified for SOLIDWORKS. These are workstation and graphics cards. Number two on this list is RAM. You always want to make sure you have two times the amount of RAM as the size of your largest assembly file. So if you have an assembly file that's eight gigabytes that you're going to be working on, you want to make sure you have 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you go on the SOLIDWORKS website, they're going to say that you need a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM, but if you have four gigabytes of RAM right now, that's the first thing that you should do after leaving this 10 for Tech Talk, is go get some more RAM, upgrade that. It's the cheapest thing you can do to a computer, and it's going to have a crazy impact on your performance in SOLIDWORKS. The third thing is the processor. Now, you want to make sure that you can have a certified or a, an appropriate CPU for SOLIDWORKS, but really what I say when people ask about what processor they, they should get, I just say the faster the better. Just get whatever your budget tells you you can. Get the best one you can. Um, SOLIDWORKS uses processor for most of the things that it does, so it's important to have a good one. 
but usually this is something that you decide when you first buy your computer. It's not something you're going to upgrade later down the road. So more importantly, graphics cards and RAM can be upgraded, and those are going to give you the best bang for the buck. You know, I got a question, Justin. I mean, a lot of these processors are multi-core. Does it make sense having like four cores or two processors? So you got eight cores. I mean, can SolidWorks take advantage of all these multi-cores? Yeah, definitely. So base SolidWorks isn't going to take advantage of it that that much, but if you go into simulation or rendering or other add-in packages that SolidWorks has, it's going to use as many cores as you have available. So it's totally going to improve. So it used to it used to be that just get the fastest one and not care about what cores there are, but nowadays just get the best one you can for the budget you have available to you. So as I was said was saying, graphics cards are the most important thing for SolidWorks. But how do you know if you have a certified card? Well, if I look at this website here, which is on the SolidWorks system requirements page, I can type in a computer vendor, and there's a list of computer models based on that vendor. So here's a Precision M6800, for example. And then there's a list of all the cards you can get. So that list of cards is going to tell you what is certified for SolidWorks. I could then further go down this list and tell it what kind of SolidWorks version and what operating system I'm using and actually see a graphics card driver for that graphics card that's certified. So when you're dealing with tech support, is that typically the first question you ask? Hey, are you on a certified card and do you have the latest driver? Exactly. And sometimes people don't know the answer to that. How do you know what driver you're on and what card is in your system? Well, luckily SolidWorks has a tool called the SolidWorks RX tool which is in your start menu. If you go to the SolidWorks RX tool under your SolidWorks folder, you can open up this diagnostics tab here, and it'll tell you if your graphics card is supported and if the driver is up to date. If it's not supported, it'll tell you that right here in red. And if you have a supported card but you're not on the right driver, it's going to tell you that as well with a link to download that driver. So this is super cool because a lot of people don't know specifically what, the, what driver they're on, or maybe they're upgrading based on NVIDIA sending them upgrades. That's not necessarily what you want to do with SolidWorks, because maybe SolidWorks hasn't tested it yet. Maybe that driver doesn't drive with SolidWorks. That's a good point. So this is a really cool website that's the Intel Workstation Configurator. This is a tool that was introduced to us uh, on one of our SolidWorks presentations by Intel to show us that we can provide this to customers. You can actually go to this website. You can put in what kind of complexity of work that you, you, that you do on a daily basis. Say I work with complex parts that are 100 to 200 parts, and I use simulation. I can click on this, and it's actually going to provide me with information on what kind of machine Intel would recommend. So Intel actually works directly with SolidWorks. This is for SolidWorks, and it's going to show you what kind of processor you should get, what kind of memory you should get, what video card is recommended, and storage SSD is always recommended. You always want the fastest hard drive you can. You can even print out a spec sheet of this and give it to your boss and, hey, this is the machine Intel says I need to use. Obviously, this only comes into play when you're making a machine for the first time, but it's a good thing to take a look and see if you're on the right you know, step. You know, I noticed you didn't talk about operating system 32-bit versus 64. It seems like everything is 64 now. Is that correct? Yeah. If you guys still have 32-bit, then uh, SolidWorks isn't going to perform at all. You might not even be able to install the newest versions of SolidWorks if, if, in that case. So 32-bit has been kind of wiped out, and 64-bit and, uh, is the new, the new standard. Gotcha. So. All right. Machine that's not running SolidWorks great, you can actually tweak SolidWorks settings to make it run on your machine as fast as possible. So this is like any software. Uh, even if you're loading up a video game on a computer, you can't just put everything to high quality, max resolution, <laughs> max frame rate. You can't do it unless you have a supercomputer. Not everyone gets a supercomputer. I, I, I know that. So you can tweak those settings down a little bit to make it run as fast as possible on your set of hardware. Now, not all of these changes that I'm going to make in my settings are necessarily recommended for everyone, but if you're struggling with performance, these are some tips, basically some settings that you can go in, you can turn off, maybe make SolidWorks look a little less pretty, but it's going to perform as fast as SolidWorks possibly can. So while you're going through that, will any of these settings affect overall performance downstream, say CAM software or anything else? 
This is going to be setting specifically in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so good. these are only SOLIDWORKS uh, settings. This isn't tweaking anything on your computer that's going to mess anything else up. Good question. So first of all, where are the options? Well, if you open up SOLIDWORKS, there's that little gear icon at the top. When I click on that gear icon, if I have a part open, I actually have two available tabs in my options. I have system options here, and I have document properties. Document properties are the options in the individual part you're looking at. So you can change maybe your drafting standard or your units in that part, right? So if you want to show millimeters or inches, there is a slider called image quality that you can make things uh, less circular or more circular, basically how optimized your edges are. Uh, usually that doesn't make a dramatic difference in performance though. So usually I say just put it to wherever it is in the beginning. If it's driving you crazy and everything looks like polygons, then slide it up. It's not going to be a, a huge performance drag showing circles with the graphics cards nowadays. More importantly though are your system options. So if I go into options here and go to system options, I can see there's a huge list on the left. The first one I'm going to talk about is the freeze bar here. You always want your freeze bar enabled. That's in the system options general tab. What freeze bar is, is actually something really cool and it was added recently in SOLIDWORKS, maybe circa 2014 I think. Most everyone knows what the rollback bar is, right? It's that blue bar at the bottom of your feature tree that suppresses components when you drag it up. Well the freeze bar when it's enabled is a yellow bar at the top that you actually drag down. What that does is it locks all the features above that freeze bar and it's only graphical data at that point. So if I have some complicated part and I don't want to worry about SOLIDWORKS rebuilding all those features over and over and I'm just making some edits to the end of that part, I can slide my freeze bar down, start making edits. Here you can see a pattern is going to work super quick. To SOLIDWORKS this is just adding a, a, a pattern to like a block of geometry. It's not adding it to these complicated uh, uh, features that we've built in the past of this part. So the freeze bar is my first big tip. Use your freeze bar if you have some complicated part with a lot of geometry. You just slide that down. You make your edits to the bottom of that part. You don't have to worry about everything. Other options are, again, under your system options. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is display style. I would go into this and I would turn all the edge quality down from high to draft quality. That's the first thing that I would do in my settings tweak. In the drawings performance, I would turn off show contents when dragging drawing views and allow auto update when opening drawings. These are things that are nice but not necessarily needed to, to use SOLIDWORKS. In display selection, I turn off anti-aliasing to none. And then in the performance button here, there's a lot I would do. The first thing I'd do is I'd turn off this uh, verification on rebuild. We don't need that to run SOLIDWORKS. Our transparencies don't have to be high quality, so I can uncheck those. My assemblies, I want to automatically load components lightweight when I open up assembly files. This is extremely important, so I'm going to check that on. My mate animation speed when I'm in assemblies, I can just turn that off. I don't need to see some pretty animation of the parts moving around. I'm going to turn off my shaded preview and turn on no preview during open. So again, these are just performance related things I can turn off or maybe tweak the curvature generation or the level of detail to, to less to make it faster. Assemblies is another extremely important thing. We want to make sure we use large assembly mode and we can change that threshold from the default 500 to maybe 250. This totally depends on your computer. Also, large design review is a very important topic that we can, we're going to talk about later that I'm going to turn on. In the view tab, I want to turn off the zoom to fit when changing the standard views. That's something that's not necessarily needed. And then all my transitions, these are the little animations that happen in SOLIDWORKS, we're just going to turn them off. Luckily SOLIDWORKS gives us all these options that we can tweak because maybe my computer hardware isn't good enough to run SOLIDWORKS at max, you know, max options, max resolution, and everything. So it gives us these options to drag all those things down, turn off the pretty effects, and then we have, you know, a running machine for SOLIDWORKS. You know, I bet you a lot of our listeners are probably wondering, well, if all these options are there, when do I actually need to be using those options? Yeah, all those options I just turned off, you don't necessarily need to use. These are all the things that SOLIDWORKS has 
put out there to make it look as great as it can. Uh, all softwares have uh, an equilibrium of performance and how pretty it is, right? So you have to make it look nice because people want it to look nice, right? If you're showing off uh, an assembly that you just built, you want it to look as nice as you can. So uh, none of these options though are necessarily needed to build and design things. Gotcha. All right, so the first tip that I have is use lightweight components. I mentioned it earlier, uh, load assemblies lightweight automatically. This is extremely important. What lightweight components are, are components that look exactly the same to you in assembly files, but they look totally different to SolidWorks. They look and they feel exactly the same, as in you can mate things together, you can measure things, you can move things around, you can see everything in that file. But to SolidWorks, it's just loading a limited amount of information. So that's the graphic information in the file, and also any faces that you may have it mated to. So SolidWorks is going to automatically strip down the information it doesn't need in a file when you have that component lightweight. If you don't automatically load things lightweight and you just want to switch one component to lightweight because maybe it's the big component that's slowing down your assembly, you can just right click on that single component and say set to lightweight. Or you can right click on the top level assembly and say set all resolved to lightweight and it'll just make everything lightweight. So uh, this is almost automatic that everyone uses lightweight components and you might not even notice it. But if you ever see that blue feather on top of your icon, that means it's loaded lightweight. The second tip we're going to talk about is large assembly mode. So what large assembly mode is kind of automates a lot of those settings I mentioned in that uh, in the tips and tricks of settings. So what settings does it automatically change? Well, it turns off your edges, so edges can slow down your graphics card. It turns off dynamic highlighting, anti-alias edges. A lot of those settings that I turned off just before inside SolidWorks large assembly mode automatically does. When you open up an assembly file, you can actually selectively click what kind of mode you want to open in. If you open in resolved, it's opening everything resolved. Lightweight, it's going to open up everything lightweight. Or large assembly mode, it's going to automate all these options and open it in this large assembly mode. The next thing is speed packs. I don't use I don't see people using speed packs very often and it's actually a really cool tool that a lot of people could use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have an assembly that is just slowing everything down, and let's say it's a, a sub-assembly that you're throwing into a larger assembly, you don't necessarily need every bolt, every screw, every face even of a giant assembly file. Maybe you just need the brackets that are around it because you need to mate it to something else. Or maybe you just need some certain faces or holes in the top level assembly. Well that's what SpeedPack does. It doesn't get rid of all that information but it makes it so it's actually like a transparent when you look at the assembly in a top level assembly or in the assembly itself. So I'm going to create a SpeedPack here real quick in SolidWorks. First I'm going to show you here that this model is open and it's fully open not anything tweaked about it. But if I go into Configuration Manager and I right click on my default configuration, I can say add a speed pack. When I add a speed pack, I can include faces or bodies. So I'm going to click on bodies to include, and I'm going to say maybe in this case I just need the frame of this grill in my assembly. All the other stuff is nice to look at, but it's not necessarily needed to mate things together or build this thing any, any farther. So I'm going to hit OK here, and you'll see as I move my mouse, towards my assembly, everything actually goes away graphically as my mouse hovers over it, except for those bodies that I selectively picked on. So this is super easy for SolidWorks to load. It's all graphics. If I go to my feature manager, look at that. There's no parts in my assembly at all. If I sent this assembly to somebody, they'd be able to open it with no, with no references. I can still measure those faces. So I can, say, measure it from the front to the back of this grill cover, see a distance between them. That's cool. I can do all those things, but those pieces aren't actually there. SolidWorks isn't loading them. It's just loading the selected bodies or faces that I told it to. So this still works in anything. It's just a configuration so I can switch back to my normal configuration if I want and everything is normal. I can throw this into a drawing and everything works pretty much exactly the same as it did if you didn't have a speed pack. 
but there are definitely some benefits to using speed packs whenever you can. Sounds like you're commenting like this is a highly underused feature inside SolidWorks. Definitely. I, I can't say I've seen customers use this more than 10 times when I'm, when I'm working on things, and I'll show them how to do this, and they're like, wow, how did I not know about that? So, yeah, speed packs are, are very valuable. All right. So large design review is the last tip that we're going to show here uh, about working with large assemblies. This tool is awesome. It's one of my favorite things in SolidWorks. If someone sends me a giant assembly and they're having troubles with it, I'll open up Enlarge Design Review right off the bat just to get some analysis of it before I sit there and wait 20 minutes for it to open in a normal mode. What Large Design Review does, it gives you a very limited ability inside an assembly file, but it loads insanely fast. So you can still see the tree and the components in it, you can still measure, you can, you can even create cross sections, you can hide or show components or other things, but you can't do everything. You can't modify that assembly file, you can just, you know, interrogate it basically. So if I open up uh, that grill again, I'm going to say look at my top level assembly, my full grill assembly, I'm going to open up this in resolve mode. Alright, so I'm going to hit open here. It's going to take a second to load, as you can see. Not too bad. This isn't a huge assembly, but it needs to update, it needs to load, and now it's open. So not too bad, maybe 10 seconds of, of waiting. But if you could think of a larger assembly, sometimes that 10 seconds is 10 minutes. But if I click on open here, and instead of opening it in resolve mode, if I change this mode right here to large design review, it's going to open it up instantaneously. I'm going to click on open. It's going to say, hey, here are the things you can do inside Large Design Review, so it's making sure you're aware. When I hit OK, it's going to be open just like that. Like no, I said, I so there's no waiting, right? It's there. No waiting. It doesn't matter how big this thing is, it's going to open. Like I said, I can still measure, so it's, it warns you that these are approximate because it might not have loaded all the components, but I can still measure and see the, the length of this grill. I can do a section view and look down the middle of it. All the components are there. They look exactly the same as if I was in a normal mode, but I'm in large design review. My feature tree is still there. I can see the parts. There's also a ton of other options you can do in this where I could click on certain pieces of this assembly and then say I want to selectively open just those pieces. So let's say I only wanted to tweak the wheel. I could selectively open that. Pretty awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today. Hope you have a good rest of your Thursday. Great, and I want to thank everyone, and, and join us next month for the uh, SolidWorks Visualize 10.4 Tech Talk. It's a new rendering tool that we'll be showing how the software can uh, uh, do real uh, photorealistic photo rendering. Again, this is Todd Majewski, and closing out the day, have a productive day.